and also for the for the institutions to gather their point of view. We have two main uh, places for that. There is the website, but I will come back <clears throat> to the website a little bit later. And there is our uh, annual conference. The annual conference. Uh, <clears throat> we had it uh, this year together with uh, the WCEF uh, in, uh, in, uh, in April. It consists of a two-day event. The first day is more dedicated to a policy overview, and then the second day is more hands-on, where we really have uh, stakeholders exchanging and also some um, workshops and uh, um, a networking area, networking village, where some of the stakeholders can uh, display what they've been doing. The second, um, the second uh, pillar is the the coordination in general. <clears throat> there are three parts in that pillar. There is the coordination group, which is uh, the um, the body that actually manages the activities of the of the platform. I will come back to it in a, in a second. There is the secretariat who helps the coordination group and also the steering group, which is more uh, um, strategic. Um, they design the, strat the, the the strategy for the platform. The steering group is consists of uh, the commission uh, uh, commission and the EESC representative representatives, but also of the chair or co-chairs of uh, the coordination group. Not the platform, but the coordination group. So the coordination group, what is the coordination group? The coordination group is a group of 24, uh, for the moment at least, it's 24 selected uh, representatives of, uh, of uh, various um, circular economy actors. Uh, they are elected for a period of two and a half years, reconductible, I mean, yeah, uh, once. Uh, they are selected via a call for expression of uh, of interest, uh, and they are really the ones driving the the activity uh, the activities of the platform. So what how it happens is that at the at the beginning of their mandate they get together and they start discussing what will be the the priorities that they will be discussing during the year, and then they select up to eight priorities and then they bring it into a smaller configuration uh, which is called um, uh, the leadership group uh, the leadership groups are really like the uh, thematic groups of uh, uh, led by one CG to discuss one of the priorities that they uh, they, they they adopted and these leadership group then are open to absolutely everyone the platform has no uh, system of membership so anyone can submit uh, their contents to the platform but for the coordination group it is the only part of the platform where there's a selection and it is a little bit close closed and then from that, closed group, they can take then the topics to uh, outside and then open it again to the to the to the rest of the community. For instance, for the moment, we have eight uh, leadership groups on the uh, on our website, uh, ranging from textiles to circular procurement to um, constructions, economic incentives and so um, and uh, and so on. Uh, the secretariat, the role of the secretariat as I said at the beginning, the Secretariat is really there to uh, to bridge a little bit these two uh, these two instances, so the coordination group and the the, the, the steering group. But it also has the, the 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 task of supporting the coordination group in it, its activities. By supporting the, the the coordination group, what we do is that we arrange uh, the meetings. We are in uh, in constant communication with them, helping them if they need um, if they need anything, if they need uh, support on organizing an event, if they need the support on contacting some uh, some people from the commission or the, the the parliament or finding other stakeholders for uh, for for their their events. We also take care of uh, the communication aspects which uh, leads us to the third uh, pillar of the of the platform which is the knowledge platform and the knowledge platform consists of our communication channels so we have the website but we also have a very strong community uh, online community on the, on the, on x and the, and the, and linkedin and we also have a newsletter that goes out to over 10,000 uh, subscribers. So 
This part uh, is also managed by uh, the, 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 the Secretariat. We draft the, the annual activity report and also the work plan for the, uh, for the platform. Um, and uh, yeah, we, well, we do a job as a Secretariat, I mean, <laughs> the, the coordination group can, uh, can come to us and uh, call us with, uh, with, uh, with any request and um, we, we try to, uh, to accommodate. One other thing that I, I put also on the slide is the EU Circular Talks. I put it in the, in the knowledge platform uh, part because this, uh, this is a concept uh that we developed we developed in 2020 uh and it is it is really um it is it, it is an online event it has always been an online event um that the leadership groups use to question a little bit the 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 the, the, the wider community so they organize the the the, the leadership groups can organize uh, thematic events, which are the EU circular talks, and um, to to on on one of the top on one of the sub topic that they identify in the um, the priorities that the the, the coordination group uh, selected. I hope that you can follow. <laughs> Sometimes it can be a little bit confusing, but don't hesitate to ask questions if you um, if you have any. So this is really in a nutshell. And uh, if uh, if there is anything that you should be remembering from uh, from from this very short introduction, is that the platform is a multi-stakeholder driven platform. It is unique uh, because of its bottom up approach, bottom up and top down, because we work together. Um, the the coordination group, the secretariat, and the steering group really work closely to, to together to uh, to coordinate, to support, and also to steer the activities uh, of the of the platform. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alice, for this uh, very good overview of the assess and its different entities. Um, now, without uh, further delay, Catherine, if you're ready, I will hand you uh, the floor for a scene setter on um, circular economy policy and a focus on products and business transition. Thanks. Good morning, everyone. Also from my side, um, as you have might notice uh, going through the call documents, there's obviously quite some mentioning of the equitable design for sustainable product regulation uh, linked to um, the uh, respective activities linked to the circular business models. And I wanted to just give you a bit of background, which might also help you or the interested parties amongst you in uh, preparing their proposals, how these things link similar to what uh, Alice just did for the um, SAP. So, Eco Design for Sustainable Product Regulation. Um, it's now been adopted. I'm just going to later get into it in a bit more detail. But um, already in the communication, which was published together with the original draft, can you go back, please? Mm -hmm. um, oh, this one. Yes. <laughs> um, there was mentioning of the role of uh, circular business models and how it interlinks with the objectives of the um, eco design for sustainable product regulation so um, for example access to circular business models can help to unlock additional savings uh, that would be delivered by eco design so they really go hand in hand to maximize the the impacts and obviously also in general transitioning to a circular economy and circular business models helps with the environmental objective of decoupling growth from primary resource use. Um, specifically, the communication mentions two actions, the potential uh, establishment of a European circular business hub. Um, also maybe linked to the proposal, we don't necessarily see physical hubs or new hubs. The idea is really more to have um, activities or platform, initial platform, to support the uptake of circuit business models, channel information and services, um, raise awareness, um, support networking, people coming together, cooperation, and then also training and exchange of best practices. And this obviously does not need to reinvent the wheel. So there are already uh, quite some um, established and functional networks um, uh, around the European Circular Economy Stakeholder Platform, but also obviously uh, more linked to um, also uh, small enterprises, the Enterprise Europe Network, and there's a specific, specific one on sustainability advisors, and for example, also the European Green Tech Clusters. Another objective mentioned in the communication is um, 
that guidance on boosting circular business models would be developed to really help businesses, but also member states and more particularly regions um, to take action. Also guidance on how investment and funding could be optimized, um, also linked to that resource uh, use uh, the dimension that I mentioned earlier. Um, and last but not least, guidance how to increase the uptake and the mainstreaming of circular uh, business models uh, between different actors. Next slide. So, how does this link to the ESPR? Uh, you've seen in the in the call also that we sometimes refer to sectors relevant to the ESPR. So the ESPR itself, the Economic Sustainable Products Regulation, it's just been published um, last week or a week ago, and um, it's basically building on the existing eco design and energy labeling rules, but it widens the scope, not only including more products, but also broader sustainability aspects. So it's no longer only energy focused. It could be resource use. It could be renewable uh, materials use. It could be uh, carbon footprint requirements. So really very broad environmental or sustainability aspects. It generally just creates a framework and the actual product regulations will be progressively introduced based on working plans. In the reg uh, text of the regulation, you will see that there's a preliminary list of products which shall be prioritized um, unless justification is provided to do, um, uh, to do either omit or add uh, products. So this list might be useful for you when we in the text mention sectors or products of ESPR relevance. So that might give you a first overview. There's also other uh, uh, publications by the Joint Re Research Center, which we um, refer to in the call document, which also has, have, uh, has done an initial assessment of potential sectors. But also to clarify, we would not see you to limit to those sectors. There should be a specific focus, but obviously there might be uh, other sectors where the uptake for uh, circular business models is either particularly relevant or particularly challenging. So these obviously could also still be part of uh, the core documents, but special focus or at least some special assessment should be done for the potential sectors. We also mentioned textile and furniture in particular, um, but again, not limited to these. In terms of timelines, we will probably publish or will have to publish the first working plan uh, by uh, nine months after entry force, will be roughly in the second quarter of 25. So then there will be um, more clarity on the actual list of products which will be prioritized. But until then, basically, the Article 18 and the other references we refer to in the call document can give you some guidance. And this just comes a bit off weird in the, in the slide. Um, this is just to give you an overview, short overview of the potential areas the eco design uh, regulation could look at improving. And you'll see, uh, based on the list of uh, aspects, that there a lot of them have very strong links to circularity, either directly or, let's say, um, indirectly. I leave it at that for the eco design for sustainable products regulation. But if you want to understand it a bit better, know a bit more, um, also maybe to prepare the call documents, then I've provided a link in um, that slide here, which basically uh, links to a recent webinar we have um, recorded, and there's also the slides available from that webinar. So um, that might give you some additional background. And that's for my end. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine, for explaining the broader context, policy context of this call. Um, a quick reminder that this present webinar is being recorded, so we will share the recording with you afterwards, and that as you are already now invited to share your questions in the chat. We are seeing them and we will address them um, in, uh, in about 15 minutes when we, when we move to the Q&A. So now, moving to an overview of the call Circular Europe Hotspot, a new governance model for the SSP with a focus on circular business model mainstreaming. First of all, you can find the reference documents that we're mentioning today 
on the slides, the actual call document with the page referring to um, priority seven that we're talking about today, and the frequently asked question document with the pages referring to the questions clarifying um, questions regarding ARCO. So, as uh, you can, uh, you've understood from Alice, the activities of the European Circular Economy Stakeholder Platform are led by a group of stakeholders, stakeholder organizations, known as the Coordination Group. What we want to do with this live call, Priority 7, is to better equip the Coordination Group of the Platform to undertake activities that support the implementation of EU circular economy policies in general, including circular business models. So the first objective of this live project will therefore be to set up a new governance system for the group of stakeholders that drive the activity of the SS. And this new group should be understood as the coordination group of the ESSP. The new members will be selected via an open call for expression of interest. And this new group will be composed of representatives of the stakeholder categories referred to in the call. As the mandate of the current coordination group uh, ends in the fall 2025, the mandate of this new coordination group will start in October 2025. Um, and this new coordination group should be fully integrated into the SS just the way that the current coordination group is. We also uh, flag that the name of the live project, the name of this group, as suggested by the title of this call, is purely indicative. We are fully open and welcome propositions that reflect your own projects. And so, beyond setting this new coordination group for the assessed, the LIFE project has several other objectives uh, that are listed on this slide and which will uh, be supported by a number of activities. For instance, we aim for the LIFE project to identify and ensure the exchange of good practices from circular economy actors to foster the debate and dialogue on circular economy at a close level to citizens, focusing on member state level, regional, local level, facilitate capacity and capability building and knowledge creation, support and stimulate the shift to circular business models and practices, including but not limited to, as Catherine mentions, to sectors and products of ESPR relevance, mainstream circular business models, as well as targeted support to SMEs and micro enterprises, and support the Commission in its activities to bring different stakeholders together to promote circular business models and practices, and in preparing guidance on boosting circular business models for businesses, for member states, and for regions. And so these broad objectives, which are the ones of the project, uh, will be supported by a number of activities. Under the steering of the new coordination group that will be created in this live project, the grant recipient will be expected to conduct a variety of activities, such as, for instance, and those are just a few extracted from the live call, identification and mapping of good practices, population of these practices on the website of the platform, developing, organizing, trainings, events on circular economy, within the website of the platform, identifying, proposing knowledge sharing, matchmaking, mentoring tools, events to facilitate the involvement of SMEs and microenterprising, organization and steering of sectoral working subgroups, or analyze and defining ESPR relevant sectors and sector products with the highest potential to develop circular business model approaches. And just to be clear, this list is not exhaustive. 
On the contrary, we expect applicants to this live call to bring in their experience and their ideas. Um, we, we really expect the applicants to exploit their, their expertise to be, uh, to, to pro be force of proposition, both on circular economy in general and on the field of circular business models. As you may have, you must have read in the call, it is also expected of the applicants to propose solid performance indicators to measure the implementation and the success of the project. There is a short number on the slide to give you an example, such as the screening of best practices taken up, uh, the number of trainings and capacity building activities conducted, or qualitative and quantitative surveys to test knowledge and progress towards the shift to circular business models. However, once again, this list provided in the call is not exhaustive. And on the contrary, we expect uh, uh, applicants to propose, based on their specificities, based on their experience, their own uh, key performance indicators, including key performance indicators uh, tailored to new activities that they might propose. So this was a brief overview of uh, the live call priority seven. And now I will give you a summary of the timeline and the process. So as you can see in the table to the left of the screen, the call opened on April, 20, uh, April 18th and will run until the 19th of September. Afterwards, we will conduct the evaluation of the projects and you can expect information on the results around January 2025 aiming at a grant agreement signature around April 2025. We encourage you to have a very close look at all the sections of the entire live call document beyond priority seven, because you will find the following sections that you see on the screen, for instance, section five on admissibility and documents, six on eligibility, eight on evaluation and award procedure, nine on award criteria. And to give you an insight on how the evaluation will be conducted, uh, after the deadline for submissions, an evaluation committee will assess all applications and um, proposal will first be checked for formal requirements. There will be a check for the operational capacity resources, so know-how, qualifications, resources of the applicants to successfully implement the project. And this will be graded uh, over 20. So this will be added other award criteria, which are relevance, impact and quality, all uh, graded on 20. Then the committee will rank the proposals uh, with the highest uh, passing score for specific priority and uh, other passing proposals ranked by score. Afterwards, during the grant preparation, there will be a dialogue between the institution and the grant recipient to fine tune the technical and financial aspects of the project, and it might require extra information from your side. There will be adjustment to the proposals to address also recommendations from the evaluation committee or other types of concern. And compliance is a precondition for signing the grant. If you have general questions on the live call, you're invited to write to the first email address that you see on the screen. If you have questions related to the submission system, you have to submit the, uh, your proposal online. Um, you can contact the IT help desk. So this is all for the first part of our webinar. We hope that it was informative for you. Um, we have been monitoring the, uh, the chats and we'll move to now about an hour and 25 minutes of Q&A, starting by answering the questions that we see in the chat. Um, so if you give me just a moment. 
think Alice and uh, myself already answered. All right, part, one of the questions. Yeah. Yeah. Like, why don't you part. give uh, the, the floor to Andreas in this Yeah, way. Andreas has a, has a question. Just a short sure. thing. <laughs> um, I don't see. Please go ahead, Andreas. Thank you. Oh, we can't hear right, you. So we can't ah. hear you. Oh, can you hear me now? Okay. Yes. Um, it's a, it's a drop down microphone. Um, just, uh, I mean, you answered the question on, on the reasons um, for better understanding the motivation behind this call. Um, uh, I just want to confirm. So um, the, the LIFE project consortium replaces the coordination group, if I understand correctly. Um, and then, I mean, I can imagine uh, a consortium with uh, 30 organizations will be difficult uh, to to organize. So for those organizations who won't be part of uh, of this project consortium, what are the engagement options for them? And then the Eco Design Forum, you answered that already in the chat. Thank you, Andreas, for your question. So we want to clarify that the grant recipient of the LIFE project is going to be like a project manager. And this consortium, which will receive the fund, will then be in charge in close partnership with the EESC, with the SS Secretariat, with the Commission, to launch a call for application, a call of, uh, for, <laughs> of express. <laughs> to, thank you, Alice. A call for expression of interest to create a new coordination group, which will essentially work in the same way as the coordination group works today. The difference is that now there will be in the grant recipient a consortium which will have funds to support and scale up the activities uh, that we that are already being done today by the SS and that we hope can take even a bigger uh, outreach, a bigger proportion. So two different things. The applicant that will receive the grant is the project manager. It can be a consortium of several organizations, but it, they manage. They will launch the call for application. There will be a coordination group that will steer activities and then this consortium will do the nitty-gritty supporting tasks, the logistics behind all these activities, which today were being done uh, with the limit, very limited resources of the SS Secretariat and the coordination group members. Um, if I may, the consortium will also have a role in supporting mem uh, coordination uh, group members by providing ideas for activities. So don't see the the the, the applicant or the, the the one that it will be running the consortium like only doing um, material task. Uh, yes. We seek from the applicants as well uh, innovation, vision as regard of the circular economy because. Uh, one of the elements of that we have seen from the coordination group and members is they have their own activities, their own organizations, and sometimes uh, a help or, or support in, in identifying where to act is very much welcome. So it's a mix between supporting a specific activities proposed by the coordination group and activities that the, the project manager considers are relevant as uh, to achieve the, achieve the objective of the of the call huh? it's important that we are not seeking only only task on, on logistics mm -hmm. i wanted to also yeah, to add the clarification and what i would like to to add to what uh, my colleagues uh, already said is that this if we if we look at the the, the, the pillars of the of the of the platform we have <clears throat> sorry in the, the the coordination pillar where we have the secretariat the steering group and the coordination group there in a way without putting them without integrating them uh, structurally in the in in that pillar that's where this consortium is coming into uh, existence if I can if I can say it like that it is really to work closely with the secretariats 
and to um, to to help actually the, the 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 coordination group in their mission as ambassador of the of the of the platform. So it's giving them more means, but still it is something that uh, that will be integrated fully, yeah. uh, as Esther said at the beginning, that is fully integrated within uh, within SS. Yeah, indeed, uh, the intention was never to create a duplication on our overlap, but to do it in, 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 in relation with the CESP. So it's part of the CESP. Um, I see that uh, we have two we have two other participants who would like to ask questions. I see Luca and Cynthia. And Cynthia. Uh, just since Cynthia's uh, question is it's a bit shorter, <laughs> I'll just give her the floor and then move to you, Luca, if that's okay with you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Cynthia, if you are able to speak. Hi, just a short question. I was wondering whether consortium members for this call will be allowed to join the coordination group or if that constitutes a conflict of interest. Mm, that is a quite fair question that we have been reflecting internally because um, initially when we are starting the conceptual phase, we didn't see a conflict of interest. Uh, indeed, we thought that maybe the, con the ones running the consortium would be uh, two or three, one organization that will have a driving role without uh, taking uh, the, 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 the protagonist and, so to say, to the other coordination groups. Member, I don't see that there's indeed a, con a conflict of interest. Uh, but we will need to see um, later in the implementation how we make this possible. So there's indeed a fair chance for everyone to, to take part in the coordination group. Mm -hmm. um, the, 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 reply, the short reply is, yes, I think it's possible, but we will need to clarify in the next steps of the, of the project how to make it possible. group members are selected uh, following transparency and, and equality requirements. Um, so, so we will need to see. Um, we have a colleague that is uh, kind of our legal master in, in these things. Um, please, if I'm saying something that is incorrect, just step in, Nadia, but in principle, uh, I don't see a conflict of interest because in, in, in both cases they are working to achieve the objective of the of the um, of the project. Great. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you for your uh, for your question. Uh, Luca, so if you wanna come in with your uh I'll start. I already answered the first one in the chat with the link. I think there's also a link in the uh, communication I just shared, but I think the link doesn't work anymore because the communication is a bit older. Um, in general, the platforms we mentioned, the EN, uh, Sustainability Advisors, uh, Secretary Stakeholder Platform, Green Tech Clusters, it's a non-exhaustive list and you'll see also from the core document that obviously our idea is really not to reinvent the wheel with establishing the circular hubs just as another network, but rather to see, okay, what is out there that we can actually just, but it's well, fun well functioning already, where we can reach already relevant stakeholder, relevant stakeholder groups, and uh, really rather use those existing networks to disseminate information, to collaborate, to organize joint events, and so on, um, rather than really see it cast in stone, okay, these are the only avenues that should be used to, to uh, um, achieve the objectives of the call. So it's really more examples of networks to tap into, but also during uh, the actual activities, but also already now in um, preparing the call, feel free to identify other networks you're either already active in um, and can easily tap into or others that uh, you might see relevant. Um, on the uh, prioritization question, uh, as I said, there is some focus on ESPR products and indeed the list is very long um, and we will only have legal clarity uh, early next year when we've uh, published a working plan on textiles 
Uh, the work has, however, already started to develop eco design requirements. So, and given the textile strategy and wider EU policy objectives and the links to circular economy, that seems, let's say, as one obvious choice. And um, furniture is mostly mentioned due to its uh, large potential, including mattresses. Um, and already the existence also of some uh, business models. But again, we also don't want to focus only on ESPR uh, or, the, or only on certain products of the ESPR. Uh, that were initial ideas where action would be probably very fruitful initially and where there might already, let's say, more work one can build up on. But that doesn't mention, uh, mean that we're not interested in all the other sectors. So ideally, it should be a holistic approach, but the idea could be to roll out uh, for certain sectors first and then maybe use the learnings. And a lot of the information uh, is probably sector neutral. <laughs> so uh, if you speak about circuit so business models in general, potential barriers, uh, I mean, let's say the more basic information um, that probably could be easily tailored towards different sectors. So um, definitely no limit on that one. And you had a fourth, a fourth question. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to read it out loud for everyone. There are some divergences between today's assessment structure of the platform documents. So for people who might not be familiar with it, this is sort of like the terms of reference of existing platform today um, and the call document. For instance, the words used for the categories of stakeholders to be included through the open call for expression of interest. When and how these will be tackled? Go ahead. <laughs> no, 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 no. Sorry. What will be tackled? Is it the discrepancy or the call yeah. for expression of interest? What's going Which will lie on, on the categories, but very fair point. Okay, um, look at, look. you want to tell us? Yes, yes, and I mean, so first of all, the, the, the document on the structure uh, and the aim is quoted also in, is, there is a link in the call document. So for everyone participating, we, we can find it also there. Uh, and yes, my, my question was on, the, on there is a slightly uh, difference in a couple of things. Uh, so it's, it's really on, on the discrepancy because I can imagine that if, for example, we want the um, uh, call for, for expression of interest to select what will become the next coordination group uh, with difference in the categories, well, that should be very clear or it should be adjusted from the uh, aim and structure point of document point of view. Luca, I would really appreciate, I mean, if you would tell us what are the samples you see in the discrepancies. Mm -hmm. We have uh, picked up on, on the on the not so clear wording on the stakeholder categories, and that's why we have added a clarification in the clarification document. I will please, <laughs> yeah, we are not perfect as you can know sometimes. <laughs> You can please refer to that. I think it's question question four. Question four. Yeah. Um, for us, as uh, you can, have been working with us in the stakeholder platform for a long time, the intention is to have the widest representation of the stakeholders. So you should read the word in uh, in the call in a in a broad way, and that is in it. And this is a sense into which we explain it uh, in the in the call uh, in the clarification that is in the frequently asked questions. Um, document. Uh, I think that the clarification is clear enough, uh, so I won't um, I won't go into this now. But it's I also want to remark that the call for expression of interest is something that the applicant has liberty to design uh, according with the only limit that is need to be in the spirit of the previous election that has taken part in in the in the past two coordination group that this is something that of course uh, we will need to to take into account when when looking at the offers but then after when we set up the project and we start uh, working on the different elements of the of the grant we can as well uh, clarify work with the with the beneficiary that gets the grant to really make it as comprehensive as possible so please i will refer that you go to the to the um, to the clarification document to have 
an initial idea of what we meant, and then uh, please uh, take as reference always the aim and, and the structure of the platform and the and the work already made by the by the coordination group and the platform secretariat and by us in the past because that is what we wanted to have as a as a reference. Um, there was a, a, a no, sorry, that's a different question. And then, if you don't mind, um, when you have the time to submit in a question in the live portal uh, with the other discrepancies, so we can further clarify for the for all applicants. Uh, in this way, we solve this issue and we de facto address it now and, and not later. Mm -hmm. But if for this, I will appreciate if you submit it in the in the portal, uh, because in this way it's made available to all participants and we ensure the, the, the equal treatment. Okay, Luca? Thank and you. I, I just want to add something to what Maria said and uh, reflect to what uh, uh, something I heard from uh, from Luca is that the the grant holder will be organizing uh, the call for expression of interest, but the selection and the appointment oh, yes, is with uh, the sec. Uh, I mean the EESC and the commission. That is something that maybe uh, needs to be clear mm -hmm. to to be clear as well. Yeah, that's important. Yeah. That, but that is in the clarification, in the, in the frequently the, asked questions, yeah, because we felt that we needed to give more details. Uh, we were expecting to, to see it uh, after, but um, indeed it's very important that we, we clarify this point now. So that's why it's added in the, in the frequently asked questions. Mm -hmm. In case of doubt, you have the link to this uh, FAQ document in, in one of the slides that I presented. Um, we have another question from Frick. If you want to take the floor, please yes, go ahead. Please, please yes. tell us. Of course. Good Hello. morning to all. Good morning. So in this uh, in this uh, call, uh, some new elements popped up. So normally we would say there is something like a support mechanism uh, through life uh, for the coordination group, and that's wonderful news uh, because I think it's it's needed. But normally we would expect that first you have a call for a coordination group who sets out the line, and then you organize the support. But now we organize the support and now there will be a new coordination group with a new governance and new support. That's a little bit confusing to see how that uh, will work out in the future. Um, because now we have a, a support group with a budget, but how will that work in the future overall, uh, let's say, scheme of things? Uh, what will be the governments? Will the secretariat will still be there with a similar budget? Will there still be an annual conference? Uh, so what will this group with limited budget have to support after all um, if we widen it really to the the full range of the eco design directive and things like that with a limited budget we have to know what we can do and cannot do as this new group so i'm still confused but at a much higher level so there's still clarity what can you say between the uh the let's say how we should see the new coordination group its mandates it means the secretariat and this Consortium, yeah, but has a support role. Uh, Rick, you should know by now that we don't like to do things easy. <laughs> <laughs> Joking. No, the reality is that uh, we saw the opportunity of a pla of uh, proposing this uh, project under the life uh, uh, priority uh, LPL. Yeah, uh, so a, a type of call under life that uh, gives us the possibility to um, support uh, uh, the fulfillment by a stakeholder of a con very concrete objective. And um, we thought that it was an ideal way uh, to provide uh, further support uh, with uh, funding uh, to the coordination group. That's the reason why we decided to follow this uh, way forward. The intention with, with, was have to have the mechanism in place when the new coordination group will start working. That's the first clarification. In, in, um, in order to have the mechanism in place uh, to be active as soon as the coordination group, group will take office, we needed to anticipate a little bit a couple of decisions. Uh, the coordination group mandate and, and, and role doesn't substantially change. It, refra it remains in the in uh, following the, the mandate and objectives so that are is describing them some in uh, terms of reference uh, of the platform. Um, um, 
In the same way, the coordination group uh, will relate to the Secretariat similarly as they are doing now. I think the slide of uh, Alice on the three pillars of the platform was very clear. The LIFE uh, project will uh, support the coordination group that is under the pillar coordination. Hence, website and, and an annual conference uh, and the rest of the dialogue, uh, as Alice has mentioned in her slides, are somehow out of the scope. It doesn't mean that we cannot create the synergies. Indeed, we should create the synergies. And a, a very tangible example, uh, the project manager should not count with creating a new website. Uh, the website that the, the project manager will be using for disseminating the outcome of the activities of the coordination group should be the website of the platform. In the same way, we can uh, together design how we want this uh, coordinate the project manager to support the, the second day of the annual conference. If we decide to do it like that, as with a new mandate, we have as well the opportunity to change things that uh, need to be changed. But that is a different discussion. What I mean is that the project manager will have an involvement in the in the annual conference as regard as. Uh, the, the group or the organization working closely with the coordination group. The coordination group up, to, up until now has uh, had a very strong role in the, in the organization of the annual conference. So I don't see why this should change. Uh, we just need to find the channels and the synergies to make it happen. And then the third question was, uh, what it, why are you having the focus on the co-design work plan? I want to clarify this. Uh, the coordination group will continue having the, the mandate and the scope to work broadly on uh, the objectives of facilitating the transition on the circular economy. But it's true uh, that we have seen emerging uh, in consultation with uh, stakeholders the role of business models. But not only in the context of the co-design for sustainable product regulation, but also in the broader context of the materialization, sufficiency, well, you know that these uh, ideas are out there. Unfortunately, uh, we have a little margin of action to really act on legislation to facilitate the business models. We can act on removing some barriers, um, we can act, but really the, for business model to thrive and for, for having an uptake of business model, you need to act on softer tools. Mobilizing, mobilizing funding on research and innovation that will be done on, on another, on a, with another means, for instance, with the calls uh, under Horizon Europe. But we wanted to use this opportunity to also mobilize the stakeholder knowledge, the exchange of best practices, dissemination of information on business models through the platform. And that's why we wanted to devote, devote uh, uh, a part of the activities of this consortium, not all of them, into business models. You will see that when you read the KPIs in the grant agreement, in the sorry, in the in the terms of reference, you will see that uh, we devote a 30 percent, 20 percent for business models. That is how you should look into the proportion between one and the others. Or not, it's up to the applicant to decide uh, how to balance that. And then please don't take the, the prioritization of the Co-Design for Sustainable Product Regulation as an exhaustive or limitation. No, I mean, uh, if we look at the activities of the platform at the moment, you're looking into electronics, into textiles, into construction. Uh, in, in a way, there's a clear link between the regulation and the legislative framework that we have on products and the activities you are carrying out. So don't see it as exclusive for one in, in, in exchange of the other. I think that we should see the contribution of the Co-Design for Sustainable Products as a contribution to the object, objective of circular economy. And I hope uh, that I have clarified, Frick, but please uh, continue asking. If I can just yeah. add something to, to, uh, to what uh, you just said, Maria, is that uh, to answer a bit to Flick's question as well is this uh, consortium can be considered a little bit like the sec the SS secretarial sidekick, you know, working uh, working to uh, together to upscale the activities of uh, of uh, of the platform. The secretariat, as Flick, you were asking the secretariat, what would be the role of the secretariat? The secretariat is there to stay. 
um, the coordination group is one part. So we have the three pillars and the coordination group is really one part in the second pillar. So the secretary will continue working on the two and uh, two and three quarter uh, other parts of the of the. Hmm? And even with and, and even with the coordination group as well. So it's really um, you need to see this uh, this project as a mean to help upscale the activities of the platform and to give the coordination group members means to continue their work as ambassadors of uh, of, uh, of, um, of of the the, the the platform. The coordination group, as Maria said, will be working as usual. Normally, we didn't for, uh, for, uh, plan any uh, huge modification. It's only in the topics, the priorities, it needs to be in line with the priorities that are mentioned in the, in the call. So um, I hope this uh, this helps uh, yeah, a, little, a, a little bit. And then um, I think that we have covered... Uh, there is a question from Valentina. But, but she, Oh, um, okay. Yes, um, so the question for maybe other participants that may be in, interested is, um, is a re requirement of the application that a consortium that in, must include entities from different member states? Um, so on this, Nadia, if you're still with us? Oh. I'm, here. Yeah, I'm, just, yeah. okay. I'm here. Okay, thank you. Um, we um, so we we started to answer this question, and maybe you want to to come in. I don't know if you see it in the chat. It's here. Um, the question on um, whether it's an application requirement that a consortium should include entities from different member states. If uh, this is not part of the specific. Uh, specific priority requirement, which, as far as I can see, it's not. It's not. This is not. Yeah, this is not a requirement from the live call, in general. Okay. Well, that was clear. <laughs> <laughs> so to to yeah. make it easy for Valentina, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Nadia. Thank you, Nadia. You're welcome. Mm. <laughs> any other question, colleagues? In any case, you would you have now the time to go to read to and then when reading the the terms of reference and the frequently asked question, you have uh, any question, please submit it into the platforms for the, all the stakeholders to read it. We will be very quick in replying. Uh, sorry, we colleagues in Trinea will be quick in replying, and and then um. we will have the information soon. Yeah, Maria, you mentioned the platform. Uh, just to clarify, what uh, you have put in the slide, uh, uh, Estelle, what was presented by Estelle is correct. So the, there is a functional mailbox to be used mm -hmm. uh, to submit question to CINEA live unit. So CINEA uh, live inquiries. So uh, that's, uh, that's mm -hmm. the way to ask question on the, the calls um, and uh, and only if you have an issue with the IT, uh, I mean, uh, because as you know, you will have to submit uh, the proposal via the funding and total portal. Uh, so if you have issue to access, if you have issue of uh, uh, EU logging and all that, CINEA is not in charge. And this is where you have also the link uh, that was in the same, which is the IT help desk. So, um, but on the content of the call, please send your email indeed to Cinea Life Inquiry uh, up to seven days uh, before the closure of the call. Um, however, uh, and uh, that, uh, that will be answered by, uh, uh, by Cinea with the support of uh, DG Environment, uh, and uh, other relevant colleagues. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Thank you, Nadia. I apologize. It's true, it's not a platform, it's a functional mailbox. I was meaning to that uh, to that mailbox. Sorry, I mentioned I said platform, and I don't want to, to confuse. Thank you, uh, Nadia, for the clarification. 
We have another question from Veronica. Veronica, would you like to take the floor? I think she wants to do it. Yeah, uh, I can do that. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. I can. Okay. Um, well, looking at this call, I have to say I also um, have been quite confused about the activities and the time that is actually expected to be spent on the tasks working towards um, supporting and managing this, uh, the group and the activities that the group uh, creates. And since I come from an NGO where we do a similar type of um, activities, but on much smaller scale, on national scale in the Czech Republic, um, we were considering of applying for this call, but seeing um, how many activities one needs to do um, to be able to apply for this and actually receive the funds and do the job that is needed. I'm curious from your perspective, what does an ideal applicant look like? And from previous years, um, how much time is actually expected, let's say on a weekly or monthly basis to be spent on these activities? And can you envision that um, yeah, people can still do other activities besides um, completing these tasks? Um, yeah, that is kind of one of the questions. And then I have one more uh, different question, but maybe for now, this is enough. Thank you, Veronica. Now we understand much better um, the, the, con the content of your question. I would like to draw your attention to the fact that uh, this call has a budget of one point. 8 million for three years. Uh, the mobilization of that budget, budget should give you an idea of the type of uh, work uh, that is required. Um, as you can see in the in the call, you, you have different type of activities, but one thing that we uh, made clear this um, during the presentation earlier today is that this list is not exhaustive, that we will also be looking for innovative uh, ways of addressing the objective of the call and, and then uh, for the inspiration and new ideas of the applicants. We don't have in mind or we don't, we have not discussed of what type of applicant we will be looking for. We are open to have a, a consortium of several organizations, a organization that proposed a working method with uh, other, 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 or, uh, we don't really know in advance what we are looking for because we want to be open and be fair on the, on the evaluation of the, of the applicants. Uh, the fact that it's uh, an NGO working at national level would not uh, exclude you for applying, but it's true that uh, you will maybe need to look for partners in order to have a wider coverage outside a single member state and also to mobilize uh, the, the working force to really fulfill a budget of, of the amount that I have just mentioned uh, now. Uh, I think that the other question is uh, quite interesting because I, I see that you are looking at the, and the call and maybe measuring the, the, the capacity of your organization to apply. I think that outside the, the PLP call, um, to join the coordination group, we will need to wait until we launch the call for expression of interest. Of course, this will be widely, widely disseminated into the stakeholder platform. Um, and then uh, you will find the information whenever we are ready to do this. Uh, but you need to consider we will need to have uh, the call closed and the applicant selected and, 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 the, and, the, and the grant running. So don't expect this before mid-2025, uh, in, in particular because the new coordination group will start working mm -hmm. as of October 2025. Mm -hmm. Uh, now let me tell you something that is outside the call, um, and I'm using the opportunity as I, uh, we were called on the stakeholder platform. There's uh, not only two ways to engage with the platform. Uh, certainly, the, the call is not the call or being part of the coordination group is not the only one. We have uh, in the website uh, possibilities to join the, um, uh, in interactive groups with uh, leadership group. I'm looking at Andrew because I'm not updated, but. 
but uh, you can also contact co current coordination group members to liaise with them in case you would like to propose an activity or have a, a discussion with them. Uh, the secretariat of the platform is open. It's always open to to give you a hand uh, on how to uh, exploit the opportunities within the platform. Alice will kindly write uh, in the chat the functional mailbox of the secretariat. Don't hesitate to contact uh, us there. Um, but please let me be clear, this is outside the, the submitting the call because we cannot reply uh, questions on the call in this uh, mailbox, only in the mailbox of, of the CINEA, of the CINEA, in mailbox of CINEA. Well, I hope I have clarified, Veronica. Yes, thank you so much. I think that's very clear. And indeed, we might be looking at joining the platform uh, perhaps differently. But uh, in any case, it's really interesting uh, for me to know. So thank you. Thank you very much. Luca? We have something from Luca. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just. <laughs> Maybe Luca can come in. Yes, okay. Luca, we see that you've. Uh, it's just an extra phone call. Ah, it's an extra. Okay. No. You're providing information in the chat. <laughs> you see, see I was brainstorming uh, in the chat, basically. Yes. <laughs> you see, this is the type of uh, of thinking that uh, there's opportunities open uh, within the the activities that are mentioned in the call. I think that once we have this in place, many other opportunities will, will arise. So I see this as a, a thing that is opening doors rather than closing them. Thank you, Luca. It's Thank exactly you, Luca. a good way of thinking. We welcome any questions you may have. We're here. Uh, we have time. We're here <laughs> for you to reply to any question you have on the live call. And just to, to, to remind everyone that there is the, the FAQ and the clarifications uh, to, this, uh, to this call. So if you consult it, when you consult it and you still have questions, don't hesitate to, uh, to submit them to, uh, to the function, to CINEAS functional mailbox. Arthur, do you want to come in? <laughs> just saying hi. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, a call for <laughs> please Enrique uh, and please. also a call for for uh, from Cynthia. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. From Cynthia. <laughs> it, I think it was Enrique. Enrique, yes. If you want to yes. Hello, Hi, Enrique. Everyone. Hi. Hi. I just wanted to say that uh, um, as fund managers, we're very happy to to um, join forces with other um, stakeholders for the development of this. Uh, I think that. Uh, after this call and after reviewing the, the, the call for very closely, we think uh, that this is um, kind of more holistic approach to, to the whole solution. So I think that someone, whoever wants to lead this, we will be very happy to support. Unfortunately, leading it for our, from our side is, is a bit challenging, but the, the one can, um, that feels that it can be, uh, I think, fund managers, as fund managers, and, and specialize in that a specific field of circularity, will be very um, happy to join uh, and join forces with that. Thank you, Enrique, for sharing. Um, yes, yeah. Yeah. We, we were, yeah. thank you. We were, um, I'm not. <laughs> we were saying that, uh, you know, for uh, data protection reasons, we cannot share with you the list of the participants today. However, if you wish to be known to the other participants, um, don't hesitate to use the chat to share your, uh, your contacts. Yeah. Yeah, 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 no worries. I, I understand clearly. So that's why I'm also sending a message on the chat so yes, that everyone absolutely. understands. But at least know <laughs> Great. That, that we are here. So um, <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much for the call and for the the the, um, the very good cl clarity on this. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you.
Uh, Nadia, would you like to clarify something? Um, I think it's important we recall that we are going we are going to select only a, a grant uh, applicant. Uh, yeah, but no, 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 not yeah. Just just to clarify what I I, I wanted I was sharing with you, Maria. In bilateral, is that uh, uh, for this uh, call for proposal for all the specific topic, uh, not only for that one, but for also for the other ones, it's only one grant uh, that will be selected. Uh, we may receive several proposals applying to each of the topics, but however, the selection process that was presented by uh, by Estelle will lead, in, in fact, to uh, recommending for funding to the uh, evaluation committee the best ranked proposal. And that will lead, uh, I mean, of course, replying to the specific uh, uh, topic that we are talking, uh, priority that we are discussing today. And that will lead to one grant agreement. Of course, this grant agreement, and this is the uh, why it's nice to see people calling uh, for joining forces. This, uh, the applicant uh, uh, is a consortium of different entity, uh, each of the, them bringing their experience, their knowledge, and their uh, specific expertise uh, to uh, in the design of the of the project and after in the implementation of it. So this is just. Uh, to, to clarify if there was any doubt that it will be only one grant uh, uh, at the end that will be selected for that specific topic and for all the specific topic of, of the, the call PLPs. Thanks. Uh, to translate this in what is happening, I think it's relevant to say that if Enrique, Cynthia, and Luca, you are in the screen, would like to Join forces, it's important that you submit a single proposal uh, where the, the three of you appear and that it has been co-created and co-created be between the three. Uh, individual proposals uh, that refer that you have joined forces with will not uh, will be ranked according to the quality, but uh, it doesn't mean that uh, now I'm, I'm messing. I thought I, I had it clear. If no, you it, want to do it, please yeah. we'll, do it, we'll do it in a single proposal and not three yeah. of them. Yeah. <laughs> exactly that. If 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 uh, if you all have good ideas, but you don't present one proposal, I mean, at the end of the day, and if you say that you will collaborate with other, but those other are different proposal, that doesn't work because it's only one proposal that will be considered. So yes, indeed, Maria, you. This is this is a good clarification. So please, uh, the moment to exchange, discuss, and um, make the contact is now. Don't continue working independent. Don't start working independently and then submit proposal. Mm -hmm. Only one proposal will be selected, and so um, uh, bring the forces in a single one. That's I think the the gist of it. Uh, Any other question, colleagues? No, people are leaving their details, which mm -hmm. is which is nice to see. Mm -hmm. All right, Michael. All right. Well, um, if there are no more questions, then we will thank you all very much for taking the time to attend our information session this morning. We're happy we had this opportunity to clarify certain things. We hope uh, that you will like this project, find it inspiring and apply. Uh, we look forward to, to, to this. Um, so we will share the slides with you. We will also share the recording, allow for a couple of days for us to, to process it, but we will share it with you. You have the contacts in the slide and in the chat of the Senia uh, functional mailbox. You also have the contact of the SS Secretariat for matters regarding the SS outside of the call. Again, we, we cannot answer your questions on the call like this, but if you want to get in touch with the SS, you can do so uh, reaching out Alice on the functional mailbox. 
Um, and uh, thank you. And uh, we're going to close this call now and wish you a, a good day and and all the best for your uh, project proposals if you wish to to go forward. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. much. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Thank you and good luck. Thank you. Bye. Bye.